All right, back to Pat uh, Cadell right now. Pat, I'm sorry we ran out of time, but I do appreciate your coming by. Uh, mm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What do you make of this, Pat? You were ahead of this. You weren't buying the polls. You were, you were a little cynical about them. Um, why? Well, because I was actually looking at some other, some other questions. I even raised the point at the end of our meeting today at 5.30 when we got the exit polls with the decision team, and I said, I, I think these are wrong. Well, I know how bad the exit polls can be. But looking at the internals on them, it struck me that uh, this was going to be very close tonight. Trump had been moving. Uh, there are a couple of things that are worth pointing out here uh, about why this happened. I wrote a piece yesterday for Fox.com about the, the real surpri November surprise and the uprising of the American people. And I tried to lay out the level of alienation in this country and feeling. Donald Trump did not create the movement he had, it created him. As it, uh, and that movement is very powerful. And the group that I kept saying, and I talked to you about this on the air this last week, Neil, was the um, people who were unfavorable to both candidates. And yet they were lining up on the issues pretty much and, and wanting change, movement from Obama uh, policies, uh, which the country wanted tonight, and they thought the country was in the wrong direction and declined. They had very bad feelings about both candidates. Over the weekend, those people were the voters in motion. And tonight, uh, according to the exit poll so far, as they keep reweighting it, it was uh, tw it, Trump won those people by 20 points. That was 18 percent of the electorate. And that's enough to explain in part his victory. And you can see it in places like Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. The reason he is, lead, is, is in contention in Pennsylvania is up in the northeast coal country in a county that Obama won handily. Uh, Trump has slaughtered his way, slaughtered Hillary Clinton in uh, Wilkes-Barre and down in the Lehigh Valley is running very strongly because he's speaking to those voters who have been very frustrated just as he did in Ohio and why the race is close in Michigan. Uh, I do believe that the, uh, you know, uh, in the end, I think Hillary is clearly going to probably win the popular vote. Um, but uh, Trump will have pulled really? off. Really? Why? I, uh, well, because I, there's so much of California. Oh, it takes I, California a month to count their votes, uh, or a month and a half. It's just unbelievable. But I think that the likelihood is that she might win the popular vote. Oh my God! But he is going. But look, right now we could see. Uh, you know, well, it's uh, close. The They're two, about a million apart. Well, yeah. uh, well the uh, I know, but uh, it'll. You, I understand. The, 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 it's a lot of votes. The 269. We could end up. The worst thing I think could happen to Trump tonight, uh, its outcome is it might end up 269, 269, throwing it in the House, and that would require uh, his losing everything but uh, winning Alaska, um, Arizona, which I think he does win, and um, and uh, the, the seat in Maine, which apparently he's headed. And so, by the way, a 269, 269 deal affords the possibility of a president from one party and a vice president from another. Yes. It couldn't be nutty, right? But no, no, we're not there. This, we're not there. But no, no, not there. I still think he'll get it. What I will sat, drive I, it? What ultimately drove this whole thing? What night? ultimately drove it was the discontent in the country, legitimate dissent and discontent in the country. And look, Donald Trump had so many things against him. And that's why all of the pundits, including, well, I won't even say, but pundits everywhere who earlier tonight, yesterday, whatever, said, oh, she's got it, she's won. They did not contend with the fact that you have a country that believes it is losing, it's in decline, that believes that the, uh, their children's future is in danger, who believe that the system is rigged by Washington. This is a massive upsetting of the political class. And as I said at the end of my piece, if that issue alone had been dis the decisive issue, Trump would have won this by 10, 15 points. Um, but he, even with his personal problems, in the end, enough voters, even in this divided partisan environment, felt that they needed change and they wanted an anti-establishment figure. And that is the reason his appeal to those pop, to those voters. And um, uh, in, I think the story will, it's in the exit polls and we can see it. But it's not such a shocker to me. I thought that he was, in every one of the close states that I looked at the kinds of questions in, all of them showed that disposition, um, that there were people ready to move. You know what's interesting too, Lou Dobbs, and you think about it, is that the, they, they accepted a lot from Donald Trump. All the controversies, the language, 
uh, alienating all these groups, supposedly, because they were that ticked off. Yeah. But other stuff superseded it. They were that ticked off, and there is also a great argument in all of this for a longer campaign season, as much as I hate to say that. They got, they got, <laughs> they got to know both of these candidates a little bit more, certainly Donald Trump. She ran from the electorate. She hid out. Uh, she was only in the most controlled circumstances before cameras. He was willing to say anything, talk to anyone, and did. Uh, and, and I think at the end, there was a great value in that because he didn't, he didn't turn out to be running for the cameras. He wasn't a reflection in the well, eyes of the electorate. He scripted or stilted no, or wasn't. reading and, and, cue cards. And, and or he, manufactured. And if you remember, the hundreds of days she went without having a press conference. And 278, the contrast, yeah, the, the contrast to that alone, uh, you know, and the fact that it did seem like she was manufactured. And if you talk to Hillary Clinton supporters, they talked about the look money at, in the ground. Look what's going game. on in Pennsylvania, folks, here. They're separated yeah, now by about a half a, a percentage point here, mm -hmm. so a, a little outside the margin of error. This is the 20 electoral vote state here, so this is a biggie. Uh, I think uh, he that, that could put him over yeah. the top. The, the other thing going on, though, is this perception of corruption and this sense that she was playing by a different set of rules. And I get it. I've done a lot of reporting on Latin America and in Latin American uh, the, on Latin American economies and politics. There is a part of the Clintons that kind of remind you of it. I mean, you think about what Brazil has been going through recently and how they, they've had to, to, you know, basically clean house with their politicians. It doesn't seem like something the United States would have. For example, someone running for president that is right. being investigated by the FBI. Argentina is a good example of that as well. Uh, you know, uh, by the way, Kirshner, she right. was married to uh, the, the president. Uh, and, and, they, and they actually kicked her out for a more conservative government also. But I, you know, I'm going to also say it's so interesting that Hillary Clinton had the same hubris that the establishment Republicans had in the primaries that they went with the old school playbook to your point near point that's very interesting. after watching 17 of these guys drop 16 of them drop like flies because they went with the old school they playbook wanted Donald Trump. she took the same old school playbook and for some reason thought it would work for her it, it, it was well, amazing well, well she and her campaign actually felt that he was the weakest candidate of the bunch yeah, and that he would right. be easiest for her to beat. Yeah, they were salivating at the thought of facing Donald Trump in the general election. And, and you saw that after the first debate. After the first the debate, first they just assumed that... they've done that. I can remember back in 1980, the, the Carter folks were salivating for this guy, Ronald Reagan, yeah. and were worried when George Bush Sr. won Bedtime in Iowa. And they thought, oh, my God. I mean, so it, they thought, well, it's got to be Reagan. We can annihilate him. And, they, of course, we now know what happened. It, it's, you know, we're still a ways from a conclusion here, so this may be premature. But at least the, the Republicans had the good judgment to be competitive and to, sh sure. and to shed the old, that is, Jeb Bush and all that he represented. Whereas the Democrats embraced, uh, it was her turn. What, you know, yeah. What uh, you know, they a, did the, uh, the birthright, the or John McCain, yeah. uh, you know, Senator Dole thing. And yeah. the party fell in lockstep behind her, Very not good. out of enthusiasm, but out of fear. Well, it was all they knew. It was all they knew. Connell McShane, you have an update for us, but can I just show you one thing in Pennsylvania? Please. Because I just want to follow up on what uh, Pat Cadell is, is saying, because it's really quite remarkable. Not only how close the state is, and uh, Donald Trump does uh, seem to have taken a little bit of a lead here, but to go back to 2012, remember I was talking uh, about the northeastern part of the state and uh, what President Obama did um, here in Luzerne County. That's what Pat's talking about where Wilkes-Barre is pretty much. It's a 52-47 win for Obama, but look what that same county is doing now. It's 58-35 wow. to Trump. I mean, that's that's what's happening tonight. These is a, It's a... A working class area that has been, you know, old school, traditional union Democrats that is now gone to Trump. It went to Trump by a huge margin, something like 77 percent in the primary. And it looks like it's going to him by a huge margin uh, tonight as well, flipping a traditionally Democratic county. So. The problem Hillary Clinton has is this perception that she's the let them eat cake kind of candidate. You know, we'll just throw them a few little freebies their way and they'll go away. And the one percent will continue to benefit from this globalization uh, that has been very beneficial to the very wealthy. Wouldn't you with welcome capital? if all is this bashing of the rich and the rich are evil, we could get past that nonsense, you know?
you know, one of the things that he has done so well is point out the success he has become. I always said Mitt Romney needed a little Donald Trump, yeah, right? right? I because thought Mitt we Romney should be proud. Just, Mitt Romney needed a lot of <laughs> But if Trump. Mitt Romney should have embraced, yeah, I'm a wealthy guy. But and I've message, created all these yeah. jobs. Her message is so hypocritical. Yeah. I'm going to amass hundreds of millions of dollars and global power, and then I'm going to rail against Citizens United, all those super PACs helped fill my billion-dollar presidential coffer. That's uh, why she had a tough time with the Bernie voters. You know, I just saw somewhere where uh, the young votes, I guess it's the 18 to 